Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Daytona International Speedway. It's Apex Racing TV broadcasting you live the SRA GT series. Uh, Marco Barbanera in the box with me, of course, is Wei An Chan. And behind the cameras is Scott Newton, as always. Hello, guys. Hello, Wei An. So we are here. It's night. It's Daytona. There's going to be fireworks after the race, and I think even during the race. Hello Marco, hello everyone! Fantastic night here ahead of us as we come to live round 9 of this GTE series by Simracers Asia at Daytona International Speedway. Of course, this circuit needs no introduction at all. Um, it is the home to the Daytona 500 as well as the Rolex 24 hours of Daytona. And it's also why we're going to have a fantastic race tonight, Marco. Yeah, absolutely. Cool track temperature. We have only 19 uh, degrees. Uh, uh, sorry, 18 degrees. 65% uh, humidity. There's a bit of wind, but all in all, it should be a nice, nice night race with uh, uh, the usual Daytona uh, stuff happening. So we're going to have a lot of sleep streaming and people having trouble getting away from each other because uh, you just have the very quick infield section with four corners uh, three of them are very slow speed and one is a f extremely fast kink uh, sorry and there are four uh, uh, very slow corners the first one then the second one then you have a fast kink other two slow corners and you get back to the nascar turn two you do all the oval up until the back stretch, just a bus stop, which gives you the opportunity to maybe go for a lunge. And then after that, it's a long, long run through NASCAR 3 and 4, back to the start finish line, the tri oval, and then it's back to the uh, infield section. So not a lot of corners, not a lot of, lot of corners where you can actually make a difference. So patience, strategy, and I, I tell you what, being an oval racer, a little bit of knowledge on, on oval racing can give you a nice advantage tonight in knowing how the slipstream works and how it's best to make your move. Certainly, of course, this circuit, as you've described, is rather simple because it's only got two or three distinct sections, that being the infield as well as the bus stop chicane. But there are two corners that will make or break your lap time was one of the corners being the exit from the exit of the infield into the backstretch and the other being the bus stop chicane. Through these two corners, you have to get your line perfect. You have to get your exit perfect, which will bring, which will either make or break your lap time. So it's round nine of the championship. We only have this one and uh, Sebring left and we bring you that championship standing with Jaiser in Jolly. He's got 716 points. Leonardo Oliveira has got 606. Ahmad Nurazan 567. Mike Bordetti is 558. Peter Klawiter 532. Then Abirafti Putra is uh, P6 with 500 points. Then Lachlan Crow 483. Simon Sanchez uh, with uh, 468. Brian Ramfors 466. Grand Crow 441. Now, Weyan, we have 90 points available for a race win. And the distance uh, between uh, P1 and P2 is, at the moment, my math is terrible, but should be 110 points. So should this gap remain the same or just shrink by nine points, we will have a champion at the end of the race. Sounds good to me, because, of course, the point system here in Sim Races Asia is that consistency would bring you more benefit than simply winning races outright because you have to maintain a steady flow, a steady um, average of positions, if that makes sense. It's better to finish more races in high positions than to win just a couple of races and pray or uh, hope for the best. And we we also do see that uh, the drivers who are up there in the top of the championship tables, those are the drivers who've consistently finished up wherever they are. Uh, in order to secure that position. So uh, it's going to be a dogfight until the end between Jolly uh, uh, and Leonardo de Oliveira. Not forgetting that Leonardo Lopez de Oliveira is a clubman. Uh, so like, uh, and and, and uh, Jaisi Jolly is a pro-am driver. 
So we have two different classes and they are, of course, battling for the overall championship. And like I'm seeing, basically, Jali never went below uh, 82 points is the lowest he totaled that that was the first round. Then he had 85, 90, uh, 95, because you also have bonuses, of course, uh, for a clean race. So you can get more than 90 points that are available for a race win. And he had 95 points as well in Loma. So he had a very clean race, uh, 90 points for a race win, plus five bonus points, I think, if you keep it below a certain number of incidents. So uh, I think, uh, even though Oliveira is now, of course, in the, the provisional poll, Jali has a great chance of sealing the deal today and having a relaxed uh, final weekend of the season just a few kilometers down the road in Sebring next Saturday. As we are getting closer and, and closer to the end of qualifying uh, with uh, now Abirafti put on screen, we have a new entry in the championship for this uh, penultimate round. Uh, you can see him just behind Putra is the red Ferrari of uh, Sam Fitzpatrick. And I actually happen to know this guy because he's, of course, my colleague uh, from many, many broadcasts, including the next one that we are going to have right after this one for the fan stream of the WCS race from Indianapolis on uh, with the Apex Racing UK fan, fan stream of the World Championship, so don't miss it. Uh, Sam will take a quick plane to Indianapolis to join us and commentate there, uh, but before that he has to, of course, uh, drive and he is now sitting in P7 right now trying to get that slipstream from Jolly. So, uh, way on the classic uh, question. Um, um, I, that I will give you in a second uh, because of course we want to know uh, which car do you prefer on this track I personally think that by what I've seen in the official series during the week and of course commentating it on Wednesdays that uh, Ferraris have a clear advantage on the track and then followed by the Porsches and Ford is really really struggling today as, San, as, sorry, as Fitzpatrick goes on the start-finish line and he does a 40.8 which promotes him to P6 so one position gain, Mike Burdett trying to get his final lap in maybe as also Paul Nelson is about to finish his lap he still has to set a time and it's a 40.1, I think, no, 42.5. So he's last, but he sets a time with the beautiful Coca-Cola Porsche. Leonardo Lopez Oliveira is coming out of the pits. I don't know if, we'll be able to, if he will be able to not get the checkered flag as Mike Bordet on the start-finish line. 40.9, it's 800 of a second away from pole position so we will have to settle for p2 at the most other drivers coming through is alex paul p11 lachlan crow number 420 on board with him beautiful shots this uh, fantastic purple backlight a newly invented technique to keep the drivers focused at keep their night vision uh, on. Lachlan Crow on the start finish line. He died in the pit lane. So it was a, a did a little trick to us. Yeah. So the drivers are basically uh, aborting their lap times as we see Nelson uh, going for it again. Set a fast, uh, his fastest time he was set in the previous lap, and of course, it was good enough for last place. So, he wants to improve. He doesn't dive into the pits down to the tri oval 279 kph on the start finish line, and he gets uh, 41.8, so it's uh, one position better. Uh, and he's a P11 uh, for the brightly colored Coca Cola Porsche.
I think we are waiting just for a couple of drivers to finish their laps as the checker flag are waving and have been waving for the past two minutes. So we are about ready to give you the starting grid, the official starting grid in just a few seconds live from Daytona, the beautiful night sky, the fantastic grandstands here in the world center of racing as course we get ready for the usual gte action from the sra the one hour spectacular races we have been used to do all season long i'm a bit sad we have only two weeks left in the season because it has been a fantastic season and we've had some very very good racing all the way through a few seconds left to wait And so as the cars begin to take their grid, sorry, I cut you off a bit there, but I'm going to go through the starting grid tonight. Because uh, starting from pole position is Mr. Leonardo Lopez de Oliveira, fastest dr driver tonight. He sits in pole with a lap time of 1 minute 40 by 183. And taking second place alongside him in the first row is Mike Burdett, of course, another fast driver in this series. He has a lap time of 140.388. Behind him, not too far behind, just I believe five thousandths of a second behind is Mohammed, sorry, Jamal Gandur. Refer to iRacing name there. Jamal Gandur, 140.393. And P4, because he's won a few races already this season. Jasri Jali, and his lap time is 140.519. Aman Orazam takes P5 with 140.554. Sam Fitzpatrick, um, our colleague here who's graciously come on board to race tonight. 140.801, he takes P6. P7 goes to Lachlan Crow, and P8 goes to Abirafti Putra. Simon George, uh, George Sanchez takes P9, and Brian Renfers take P10. Paul Nelson, P11, Alex Paul, P12, and series organizer uh, Kevin Hawk, he takes P13, and he rounds up your grid of 13 tonight. Quite a small turnout as compared to what we would have expected, but it's going to be great racing here nonetheless. So uh, the difference between P1 and P4 is 10 points. So theoretically, the championship could still be open and adding into the final race of the season. But since points go all the way down to P30, uh, I think that in that race, uh, it would be almost impossible for uh, uh, our championship leader, Jali, to not score even though we have to still take into account the drop weeks, of course. So we will hold on to calling a champion tonight and we will do the proper math next week because you never know with drop weeks, etc. So before we start, uh, Weyan, who do you think is going to be the fastest car to tonight? The Ferrari, the Ford or the Porsche? The question that we have all year long, basically. I cannot exactly tell, although I'm aware that this circuit, the Daytona circuit, can draw some parallels to the circuit de la South at Le Mans last week that we've gone to. Because drivers now coming through the final, uh, this banked section here in NASCAR, it's called turns 3 and 4, over here, I believe turns 11 and 12. So Lopez de Oliveira, he will command the grid uh, when the pace car begins to turn it. It will be up to him to start the race as the green flag flies. So as um, camera view, fantastic camera view we have here. Safety car should be turning into the pit lane rather, rather soon at this point as the safety car, the roof there, turns in. It will be up to Leonardo Lopez here to start the race. Green flag flies. Lopez Rivera leads the field here. He currently is slightly pulling up ahead uh, of Mike Berda. Uh, my camera view does not show me the, the cars behind there. So as they take the entry now to turn one, uh, Jamal Gan doing P3 uh, side by side. There's uh, Jasmine Jali and Ahmad Norasam. And we've also got side, uh, Sam Patrick here. Uh, sorry, three wide, almost three wide there as they enter thir turn uh, three and. Well, this is a great start as they enter the infield section side by side. Jaswin Jali taking P5 from San Fitzpatrick, and he 
No, this is going to be already a battle for P5 through this left-hander king here. You know, Charlie leading Fierce Patrick, and he leading uh, the white portion. Oh, of there's a contact there in the background. Oh, All right, in the foreground. Oh, this is going to be a few cars, four cars out involved in the incident. So we may have to have a look at a quick replay of that. Yeah, they are still crashing there. Gandur, Fitzpatrick, Burdett and Nurazam were all involved in that crash there at the Western North Shoe. And this creates a huge gap between P1 and P2 because Putra was behind all these people and was able to survive. Let's see, I think that, that the crash happened between P2 and P3. Let's see, because they were neck and neck in the fast kink. Then I heard some tire locking up, so it might have been Handur. Oh, uh, clearly a misjudgment by one of the two drivers. Either somebody broke too early or too late. But that, that doesn't explain why then uh, Handur uh, was uh, getting hit by everybody. So, because he just used uh, the, his opponent's car as a, as a braking uh, aid, but after that it was a huge pile up as Alex Paul is trying to pass teammate uh, Ramforce on the inside and then he has to wait good decision so you see the lap times Oliveira at clean track but all the other guys behind it to check up to avoid that mess and it's really a nice uh, well not nice it's a big traffic jam in the pits Oh, oh a bit of contact there in the background. I think the two drivers can't really tell who they are at this point, but it does seem to be that Lopez de Oliveira, will, no, his teammate Simon Sanchez, uh, Green Macau Sim Racing Team for GD, come into a contact with another, I believe, a black car behind there. So, not exactly the best start to 60 minutes of uh, racing here at Daytona that we would have expected. But the drivers here that have uh, survived incidents from lap one. They seem to be carrying through this race well as they make their way out of the infield section and into the oval. I exactly. So the uh, you see a big gap. Of course, uh, Handur, Crow, and Fitzpatrick elected not to pit. Nurazam went into the pits. Burdett went into the pits, and you can get your faster pair in. So evidently, Handur, uh, Fitzpatrick, and Crow decided that it was. Uh, not enough damage uh, to justify losing uh, the time to tonight an extra pit stop because you can get a fast repair this is important to, to remember but of course if you stop now it's almost guaranteed you have, you have to stop again especially in a track where uh, throttle is open so much of the time and now Jason Gianni defending from Putra yeah uh, Battle for P3, for P3. Jolly leading Putra into turn one. Of course, you can see both drivers taking slightly different lines as they enter the car. Oh, a bit of incident there in the background. I think it was a car in P6 or P7 that he lost it as they enter turn one. Of course, turn one here at Daytona Road Course. It's a decreasing radius corner. You enter the corner at top speed, which also means that you have to point your car uh, more precisely and not choose a line that will make a car lose balance so that line is going to differ across different cars although Jali is still in P2 and he leaves uh, Putra who's both in the same team both in the same cars actually both in the extremely loud Porsche 911 <laughs> RSR GTEs deceivingly easy first corner but it's absolutely 100% toughest corner on the track I think uh, to get right especially when you are dealing with traffic in Enduros uh, as sadly, Mac Burdett has retired, as did Kevin Wang, so we lost two cars already in that that first lap mess. And I don't know, uh, I tell you what, I think that Jali and Putra uh, might be better uh, giving each other some slipstream to go and catch Oliveira as uh, Fitzpatrick puts a move on Handur and he is up to P7 with his move at the bus stop. His Ferrari looks uh, decently clean as does uh, does Handur uh, Ford even though he's a bit slow coming out of the bus stop and now Crow will try and take advantage of that so Handur has lost I think risking losing two places in the space of a couple of corners even though these two corners are like uh, two kilometers apart from each other but yeah that's what happens you get a bad exit out of the bus stop so it's Fitzpatrick now 
Crow and Handur 7th, 8th and 9th and Fitzpatrick and Crow at their personal best this time around. So Jali and Putra, if they are going to run this close to each other, I was saying, they might as well do some good old oval uh, uh, racing uh, uh, switch around every now and then and give each other some draft and try to close this gap to Leandro Lopez de Oliveira, even though Jali is pretty safe and as uh, we go with uh, uh, Sanchez going by Ramfors, who I think made a little bit of a mistake there at the Western North Shore. Even though uh, all drop weeks aside, bonus points aside, um, Jolly looks to have the championship in the bag, but once again, we will give you the official confirmation next week. Um, I mean, Jolly knows he's pretty safe in this P2 right now, so there's nothing to, to worry about, honestly. Um, and Ramforce is going to try to, to take his position back on the outside of the bus stop. A very difficult corner to make a move on the outside. And Sanchez is able to keep the position. But meantime, uh, Fitzpatrick is uh, trying to come back from his crash and is now closing in on these two guys here. So he has the pace uh, and maybe when he does his stop later in the race, uh, he can fix his damage uh, if he has any and maybe go even a bit faster. Of course, the straight sections of this circuit, because you have the advantage of corners that are massively banked. I think all the way up to 31 degrees uh, camber, uh, those big corners there. A bit of a uh, loose there, uh, loose rear end of Simon Sanchez as he entered turns 1 and 2, I believe. Because those corners, you want to be careful on your brake application because you do not want to uh, unsettle the car. Because he's coming under pressure. He's already been under pressure from uh, Brian Renfers, uh, as they have for the past couple of laps, I believe. So Simon sitting in P5, he seems to be pulling well ahead of Donald Brian Renfers. A little bit of uh, overshot there as they took this hairpin. Now it is up to Simon Sanchez to close the gap with the Coca-Cola Porsche of Paul Nelson up there in P4. Leaving the infield section, of course, you want the best line, the best choice of line there as you exit to carry all the speed that you can as you enter this section. Of course, this section, this is a long near straight, I would call it the near straight. So it's imperative that you exit with the best amount of uh, speed as you can. As Sam Fitzpatrick tries to get a move, tries to gun for a move for P6 uh, along the inside of Brian Renfers, and he does that uh, nicely as they make their way through the bus stop chicane and it is P6 for Sam Fitzpatrick Brian Renfers going down P7 and it does not look to be that Brian will be on to make a comeback at this point yeah. Good, good driving by Fitzpatrick now another position gained and looking at the, the, the pictures that we have this Ferrari looks to be in a decent condition so doesn't seem to have too much damage as Sanchez gets his best lap of the race and now he's uh, really pushing on Paul Nelson. He makes a little bit of a mistake, the Coca-Cola Porsche, they are side by side, going through the International Horseshoe. Nelson doesn't give up, he still has the inside, they are extremely close. Fitzpatrick is overlooking the situation. Now through the fast kink. The that form. could have well been a side by side into the kink. But yeah, Simon cleaned is... that move off and he takes P4. Oh, but I think that was Nelson trying to make a bit of a comeback, but doesn't seem to be so. Sam Fitzpatrick and PSX also eager to make a move to have a go on either of the drivers as they now get the line, now try to get the best line along the exit of the infield and now onto this big oval. Let's be honest, the side by side through the kink is not recommended. So, if possible, about the lap of the race, but uh, it's really as a misplace. You should have like. So sorry for the technical difficulties, we should be back live from uh, Daytona International Speedway. 
it's uh, round 9 of the SRA GT series, Leonardo Lopez de Oliveira leading over Jali, then Putra, Sanchez, Nelson and Fitzpatrick in the first six positions. As we are trying to give you live pictures back from uh, the speedway as soon as possible. Uh, so uh, I was also getting uh, news from the from the uh, Scott Newton that uh, looking at the data, it doesn't seem like uh, Fitzpatrick has problems with his top speed so far. So it's looking good for him. No, no significant damage. And this is good, of course, for the for the show. My camera appears to be stuck at scenic, um, so I'm not able to capture the action at the moment. I am connected to, to SRA right now, I switched to SRA2 and back to SRA, so... Fantastic style. Now we, we, we have a live footage of a, a chopper footage of wow, is Simon Sanchez there trying to go for an inside move there? Because this is an excellent camera view, although we now see Simon Sanchez go... What is... Sam Fitzpatrick going, of course, these guys going a little bit dirtier than we would expect, going below the yellow line to make the move. So now Sam Fitzpatrick leading in P4, leading these two drivers in P4. So it is Simon Sanchez uh, relegated down to P6 and the Coca-Cola Porsche in P5 as they just made their way through that happen. To the kink they come, of course at this short stretch, these, uh, Simon has the advantage of a slight bit of a slipstream from Paul Nelson. But that should, not too sure if that's going to be enough for uh, Simon to take advantage of to make a comeback move as they now come to the as now approach this corner as they exit the infield section of course these drivers have to get the best line in order to optimize their exit speed and momentum through this section as we are back live with the pictures and back live with the international feed on my screen Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so nothing has really changed. Fitzpatrick is still trying to get the best of these two opponents, uh, or maybe not, because he's now up to... Well, Sanchez is in uh, fifth, shows Nelson in fourth, but that is Fitzpatrick's car in front of them, so he should be in fourth, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe let's wait for the start finish line. So that that, that clearly Wayan is uh, is uh, in fourth place. It should be Fitzpatrick, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, now it's working. So Fitzpatrick is in fourth, Nelson, Nelson in fifth, and Sacha is in sixth place. Ramfors then Kandur and then Paul Crow is in the pits. Murad Zam retired a few laps ago. I went saw him go into the pits. Alex Paul is in as well. Um, so basically we have these cars on the track that are battling for uh, and, and we, you notice that uh, Putra lost a boatload of time compared to, to Jali so the battle for P2 is not uh, a battle for P2 anymore and so Jali now is all alone, is left alone like Oliveira and Putra is running the risk of getting uh, caught by this this trio here because Fitzpatrick, Nelson and Sanchez are not battling each other right now they are just giving each other slipstream and they might run Putra down and have a nice battle for the um, final podium spot uh, come the end of the race still a long way to go, 45 minutes left Yes, uh, three quarters of the le race left to go. I think cameras are still at Simon Sanchez if my software is serving me right. Yes. 
So Cyberman still in P6, a bit of distance between the three drivers as they came through turns 11 for 9 I believe. And in the background there, I think Jamal can do flashing his lights. Try to make a move on uh, Brian Red first there in the background. As these cars at the turn one, have a look at the choice of line that they take. This is going to be a bit of inside before heading all the way outside. And then at this point where the cars have decelerated enough, they will have enough uh, speed to take the second half of this decelerating radius corner. Jamal gonna do mm. that bit of mm. no oh. contact Alex Paul and Jamal Kandur Paul was coming out of the pits one lap down so I don't know what that was all about man not exactly uh, sure what that was uh, and yeah it, it, it didn't look like Jamal had a bit of difficulty there and he tripped over and around he went into the wall so it's straight to the pits for the uh, Ford of Gantur. Too bad because he was trying to make a comeback. And maybe Paul was uh, surprised by cold tires. Maybe even though these cars use tire warmers, if they are not, uh, you know, the track is extremely cold uh, since this is a night race. So maybe he, was, he didn't calculate his uh, braking uh, uh, area needed there in that first corner coming out of the pits. And Handur went into the into the wall, and I think that is going to be his race. Yes, does look like Jamal Gandu is a little bit flustered as he's just uh, left the section. Of course, he had a great start. To the race. He started in P. He had to deal with patience, and then have to. Well, this this race. Race. Sanchez, he is in P5, I think he just made a move from Paul Nelson. And there was a bit of a nice corner. All wet down on for as they come through this hairpin. Thinking by the looks of it, yes, Paul Nelson there trying to have made a move, and now they come to this kink. Sanchez is keeping his fifth place right now uh, for the moment. The Coca-Cola Porsche is right behind him. Let's see the lap times because I want to see last lap for Putra was a 41.4 for Fitzpatrick 41.4. So the gap is still uh, uh, significant. It's between the two because at this time we are facing another bit of a temporary disconnect so i'm not too sure if you guys are able to uh, view the live pictures Cameras now over to Jasmine Jolly. He currently sits in P2. Um, I believe a fair distance, six seconds behind Lopez de Oliveira, it, who takes the race lead, and six seconds ahead of his teammate Abi Putra. So I believe they separated a fair bit as as the race progressed earlier on. So just have a look at how Jolly takes this hairpin. Of course, this hairpin you have to take. A certain line in order to optimize the exit and now they come through to this corner of course important to take the best line there as he has just taken slightly out wide up along the entry of that corner but not too wide and he's got himself a good exit speed to take this banked corner with all the momentum that he has So Sanchez is signaled as out right now on the scoring stands, and he was sitting in P7, right behind uh, uh, Ramfors and Nelson and Fitz. Well, not right behind, but he was decently behind. So we have six cars on the lead lap. If the scoring tower on the left is uh, um, up to date, 
Oliveira is the leader, Jali in second, uh, Puta in third. Fitzpatrick is not being able to cross the gap to, to Putra in this uh, early part of the race. But you know, the entrance to pit road is always tough here. Yes, you have a lot of time to, to, to slow down, but you come in at in incredibly fast speed. Huh? And you always think to yourself, oh yeah, I have all this time to break, so I will uh, delay my braking as late as possible. The next thing you know, you are locking the brakes, and if you're lucky, you just lock the brakes a lot and lose a bit of time, but gain into the pit stop. You also risk uh, losing the car and smashing into that left wall, or worse than enough, uh, you also risk getting uh, a speeding penalty, which is never nice going to cost you about 15 seconds if I'm not mistaken so it's going to be interesting to see the pits when they come uh, if there's going to be somebody who makes a mistake and of course we've seen even in the past uh, some uh, some mistakes uh, regarding the fuel they put in and re let's remember the throttle stays open for a long time on this track so it's imperative that you get the right amount of fuel in and you also have to consider that if the leader takes the white flag in a weird moment you risk having to do an extra lap so better to put that extra lap of fuel in if I was one of the drivers I would certainly do that So at the moment Jasri Jali still sits in P2 and the gap between him and the race leader sits at just under 7 seconds as cameras have moved to the race leader here. Bright yellow Macau Sim Team Ferrari Ford a GT of Lopez de Oliveira. And by the looks of things I think we've only got uh, 8 drivers who are, with, who are still with us in this race of course. I think the other drivers who... Oh, I think a couple more drivers who have disconnected. So it's only Sam Fitzpatrick, Abi Putra, Leonardo D'Oliveira, Justin Jolly, Lachlan Crow, Brian Renfers, and Paul Nelson. These seven drivers who still remain now, uh, unfortunately. So I guess uh, a series of incidents earlier that have put some drivers off, unfortunately. And that leaves us with a smaller field to continue the night. Only six cars in the lead lap. Um, that is, of course, uh, Lopez de Oliveira uh, from first place uh, down through to P6, Brian Renfers. These six drivers in the lead lap. Lachlan Crow is in P7. He is, I uh, believe, one lap down. He is, yeah. We have six cars on the lead lap. So, Sam Fitzpatrick is looking to have a good result in the end, in his debut race. Uh, hopefully I'm not jinxing him. Here he is. I will uh, just... Uh, I know this is his team's colors, the blue and the red, but... Red Ferrari, boring, boring and more boring. I mean... We are used to crazy liveries in this championship, so the red Ferrari doesn't cut it, in my opinion. Well, then how about a red Porsche? A red Porsche is, uh, of course, top-notch, of course. And, <laughs> I, I, I mean, we see yellow Ferraris, uh, grey Porsches, uh, red Porsches, uh, uh, multi gr green uh, green fours in this championship, as uh, Nelson has a little bit of a trouble stopping his car there into the first corner, but he's able to make it in the end. He has... Uh, Nice gap to Renforce uh, and a big gap to Fitzpatrick. So he's in the middle of nowhere. Here he is, Renforce, with his beautiful black and green Ferrari with green rims and green LED strips. So all is uh, beautifully color coordinated for the Delta Sims for driver and also triple five. So a nice, easy, and iconic number. You cannot go wrong with this kind of, uh, of paint scheme, honestly. Yes, a classic black and bright lime green. Of course, that's a color choice of Monster Energy Drink, and I would be mistaken that he carries that livery. No, it's not him, it is his, 
Um, Mike Bird at his teammate, I believe. So Brian Renfrew is in P6 for his last car uh, in the lead lap. And um, I have a feeling that the race may become a little less eventful with just these handful of drivers still running. And it's amazing that we are having all these retirements on the, on on paper, the simplest track on the calendar. Like um, like we said, it's just a few corners on the infield and uh, the oval, but. Maybe because everybody was so bunched up in the beginning, that massive crash in the first lap, and then a couple of collisions here and there really, really uh, compromised the race for some of these guys. And of course, now, for example, the Kandur crash was just a product of uh, bad luck, I, I think, because uh, he, the, he was hit by Alex Paul, who was coming out of the pits and was one lap down. Maybe he didn't. Uh, he didn't realize how tough it was going for him to break uh, with with cold tires uh, but also th that we must not forget the, the crash that Kandur had uh, in the beginning of the of the race uh, where uh, he hit Nurazam if I'm not mistaken and uh, it's it looked like they had completely different braking points going into the western north like uh, Nurazam was hard on the brakes, and 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 uh, and uh, Kandur was nowhere near beginning this braking phase. So that created, of course, uh, unnecessary uh, commotion in the field. But sometimes it's 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 the deal with racing, and these guys know that it's it's a, it's a one-hour race, so it's very long. And I've seen them being behaving very very nicely throughout the season, especially in the opening laps. But uh, but now today they have been a bit unruly in their behavior as we see Abirafti Putra and his gap live to Sam Fitzpatrick down to down to 4.8 seconds right now. Even though you see yeah the gap is decreasing in the it has been, has been decreasing in the, in these past laps, but not by much. You see, uh, from 5.9 on lap 12 to 5.2 on lap 16. But, you know, Sam is closing the gap. We are almost halfway through the race, so with a little bit of pace, um, we know that 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 Sam is not a very experienced in this car. So you never know how he's going to react. The more he goes into the stint, the more the more the car gets lighter, the more the tires get worn. Hopefully he remembers not to change his tires. Uh, but, you know, maybe we could have a battle on our hands come the end of the race between these two guys. And of course, like I said, never discount the possibility for some pit stop problems. Not that I'm wishing problems for these guys, but you never know, especially in a unique pit lane like this. Speaking of pit stop problems, I think we could expect some pit stop battles to take place later on in the race because I think some of the drivers, they are far apart enough from one another for them to then switch positions along turns 2 and 3 um, as they exit the pits. Of course, the pit exit of this circuit is a little bit different from what we usually expect because as we just see uh, Abhi Pucha taking turns 1 and 2 here. The pit exit is just a small slip road and they only rejoin uh, the circuit, the infield, at this point. So it is a little bit challenging because the pit exit is a bit uh, narrow. You've got a wall that's so close to you on the right and also a series of humps which may damage the chassis of your car. So drivers will have to be a bit wary and once they exit, of course, the ex right at the exit point of the, of the circuit is where Cars may may bank left, may turn left to take the corner entry. Cameras back to race leader Lopez de Oliveira. Now as there doesn't seem to be much battles that are happening at this race. Let's have a ride on uh car of any the driver of any cars here tonight and have a look at how they tackle this racetrack. Of course, come here coming here through the bus stop chicane. A bit conservative there uh, by Lopez de Oliveira, of course, no cars around him. He's able to take it a little bit easier through the bus stop. Of course, uh, through the bus stop, the, the curves are actually rather wide, so some of the cars may be able to eat more curb as they take the corners. 
Gyro Cam here, just uh, to show you how steep the banking is. And now he comes through the try over the start finish line to take uh, start another new lap. Entry to turn one here, key to get a perfect line on the traffic light. First apex out against second apex here, and as he exits here, round to the outside curb. And through this little kink before then turning in, of course, you don't want to turn in too much uh, if there, there are cars. Of course, that point being the pit exit, there will be cars that will be coming through your left. As it's going to be full throttle here through the kink. Yes, full throttle. GTs have enough downforce to do that as he now goes hard on the brakes down into, I believe, first gear. Yes, of uh, these cars' torque curbs being a little bit higher, you'd have to take that in uh, first gear. On the third gear, down to second gear again, down to first gear again uh, through this corner. Have to secure the best line. He does that so nicely. And this is him carrying his momentum through to back to this uh, banked section. I am happy to report that all my gears were right when I did the race on Thursday. So <laughs> at least I've got that because it was complete improvisation on my part. Uh, but I was driving a Ferrari, so I was using the uh, same gearing uh, as uh, Leonardo de Rivera. Hopefully, even the third gear com coming into and out of the bus stop, which is uh, my nemesis this corner, especially the Daytona 24. It's more times that I get an off track where I go straight through than the times I get it, I get it right. Tell me more, because at, at that corner, you it's all about the line that you take and how much you're able to push your car through the bus stop section because you can't you take too little uh, you may end up uh, with taking too much time but if you cut too much you get a black flag if you're fortunate if you're unfortunate you may actually unsettle your car because that is a corner a corner entry uh, where you're going at near top speed Slowly but surely, Fitzpatrick is uh, closing the gap about one tenth, of one tenth of a second per lap. Not much, but laps here come and go pretty quickly. So it's not a huge deal. I mean, we have, um, I think, around 28 minutes left. So now the gap is down to 4.8. You see, the lap 15 it was uh, 5.6 seconds. So. Yeah, the gap is coming down slowly but surely between these drivers, so it might be a close affair in the end. Uh, Sam, of course, doesn't need any mistake if he wants to go and grab that third place. With Putra, of course, will be pushing extra hard because once you get the magic number, I think it's about around one second. Once you get in that area, get a slipstream from the car in front and it's like having no gap, basically. So that's what, what I think Sam and uh, Abby are uh, thinking about right now. If they're keeping an eye on their relatives, uh, they don't. They, one of them wants and the other doesn't want to get that gap down to that magical one, one, one and a half seconds even maybe. If you want to get the slipstream on the high banks of Daytona, the highest banking corner in all of North American motorsports. So, you know, it's a very very steep climb uh, and also very tough to climb uh, on foot uh, uh, if you i never tried but it's it's uh, extremely iconic when you go there in real life i've never been there but i've been told that it's extremely iconic when you see the banking live for the first time and you see exactly how much steep it is uh, compared to the, to the rest of the of the surrounding area. Well, here at Daytona, the banking is at 31 degrees, but that's not actually the circuit with the most banking, because the one that has most banking is actually Bristol. It's Bristol, you are absolutely yes. right. 34 degrees, so that's just three degrees more. Because Bristol is another animal by itself, it's an extremely short circuit, I think 800 meters only, like, it's like an oversized stadium, if you may. Um, of course, that, that place is known more for mm, crashes, like 43 cars packed into an 800 meter circuit. Not too sure if... Uh, I mean, maybe uh, we should have a race next season there. Oh, maybe we should go do some ovals together at Bristol. Uh, <laughs> it was just passed a couple of weeks ago. Cameras back to Jasmine Jali here, currently sitting in P2 in that grey Porsche. 
His gap from uh, race leader Lopez de Oliveira sits at 8.2 seconds and he currently sits at 6.8 seconds ahead of his teammate Abi Putra and P3. So of course, Jasmine Jali has been known to win races at in this series. And I be, he, of course, uh, I'll just check the statistics for a bit. He is the fastest or rather highest I rating driver in Malaysia at 3,797 uh, IR points. So of course, that would explain why his pace is all the way up here. And a um, bit, bit surprising actually because uh, Lopez de Oliveira, his I rating is only 1,933 which is below that of uh, requirements to enter the Pro-M class and that, that doesn't seem to be indicative of his pace here tonight and he where he's currently leading the race by such a huge margin As Sam Fitzpatrick is the first of the top runners to go into the pits 18 second stop for him so we use this as a baseline for the other stops and we'll see if it was a long stop, a short stop, or something in between. Absolutely, with I think just half an hour of racing to go, we're at around halfway point. So, uh, pit window is well open at this stage. Although we still have the cars of uh, actually the top five drivers have yet to pit at the moment. Uh, Lopez de Oliveira, Jasmine Jali, Abi Rafti Putra, Paul Nelson, and Brian Renfers. These five drivers have yet to pit, but they should be making their pit entry rather, rather soon. Forty one point two for Putra there. Let's see. Of course, well, we have to wait next lap for uh, uh, have a accurate timing report from Fitzpatrick since this lap is coming out of the pits. As Renforce is in as well from P5, so he should give that position back to Fitzpatrick once his stop is completed. Here comes Fitzpatrick on the trioval. And he goes back to P5. And he has to deal with lap traffic, I think. That should be Lachlan Crow, if I'm not mistaken. We have a bit of information from Scott Newton, uh, who, who indicates that uh, the Ferraris and the Fords have uh, gears that are individually tunable. That means, uh, I believe, the height of the gears, if you may size of the gears uh, can be changed but for the Porsche 911 it has three preset gearboxes sorry gear ratios uh, thank you uh, Scott for correcting me yes gear ratios are adjustable finely adjustable for for the Ferrari and the Ford but not so with the Porsche which has only three gearboxes that are preset it was a 13 second stop for uh, Renforce there as both Oliveira and Jali are in as well so remember, 18 seconds for Fitzpatrick, 13 for Renforce. Putra takes the momentary lead, and we see now how much will be uh, will Oliveira and Jali be stopped on their pit stalls. Fifteen seconds for Oliveira. Now we wait for uh, Jali's time, 16 seconds. So we have stops all over the place from 13 to 18 seconds and everything in between. So, of course, uh, we have no idea of uh, <laughs> who's got uh, the right amount of fuel in. Of course, different cars with different uh, fuel uh, mileage. Uh, even though we lost, I think, the, the two forces that were participating in the race. So it's all down to Ferrari and Porsche so far. So Putra has pitted, we are still waiting for Nelson to pit.
And of course, uh, Putra. Yeah, sorry. Six drivers are in the lead lap at the moment. With uh, Lachlan Crow in P7. So that's seven drivers who are still running here this race. I think Putra will add into the pits this time around. Let's see. On the yellow line. Um, no, he wants to take the... Oh, yeah, he's in. Oh, he's he goes in. in. He goes in, hard on the brakes. Little bit of a tire lock up there. You should avoid that as much as possible since you are not changing tires, but you can get away with that, of course. Just a little bit. Uh, and he's in, and I think the Coca Cola Porsche will follow him. So Leonardo Lopez de Oliveira back in the lead in lap 25 with 19 minutes left in the race taking a very wide line through the first corner I of course we know he can take it easy it's going to be interesting to see the gap between uh, Fitzpatrick and Putra and I tell you what uh, the gap has increased a bit I think uh, because uh, Putra is uh, at a bit quicker pit stop I think Fitzpatrick had the longer stop uh, of the entire field so far so yeah the gap now is back to around six seconds so that worked in favor of the Porsche driver and here no, we please. have the pit stop times on the right of your screen so, sorry Wayne just to give you a quick uh, look at how long each driver was uh, in pit lane cone to cone together with the time in the pit stall and of course you can see 41.3 for Fitzpatrick 40.5 for Putra so uh, he gained quite a bit there uh, Putra in stop and uh, Fitzpatrick clearly at the longest stop of the bunch Ramforce by far the shortest so we'll keep an eye on the guy in number six because he might be short on fuel come the end of the race lopez de Oliveira still in the race lead um it's great to see that he's fighting so hard up here so of course i think he lost his lead briefly to abhi pusha when he took his pit lane just now but right now he's back out to the race lead he sits eight and a half seconds ahead of abhi pusha and uh, sorry, of Jasmine Charlie and Charlie sits also uh, around eight seconds ahead of his teammate Abi Putra takes P3. As we are getting into the final 50 minutes of this race, and Oliveira has been absolutely fantastic today. Got a uh, nice help from uh, that first lap pileup, and he was able to break free of the draft in the first lap it's a dream scenario for any driver that starts in pole position in daytona and nobody was able to make up that gap that he created for himself and that also was created for him when everybody almost in the top five wrecked behind him in that uh, that uh, crash at the western horseshoe so he was able then due to his fantastic pace that he showed all season long to increase the gap over p2 little by little because this is how you gain um, and you put and you consolidate or you close a gap in daytona little by little you cannot make much difference throughout the lap especially if we are we have some very similarly skilled drivers as the guys here as we, we can see the gap is 5.7 seconds between Putra and Fitzpatrick. Down, down to 5.3. Uh, of course, we have to consider the pit stops that have changed a bit of the landscape in the past few laps. But yeah, he was able, uh, Putra, to put once again a little bit of a, a gap between himself and Fitzpatrick there. And Fitzpatrick, I think he caught a slowdown or something because now the gap is up to 7.3 seconds. So, as Crow is in the pits, no risk of losing that seventh place since there's nobody behind him. And he can go in, take a splash of fuel, and finish the race with his in P7. 
No, I think it looks like a Lachlan Crow may have. His name has. Oh, sorry, it was just him entering the pits. Saw his name uh, graying out for a bit over there. So positions have not exactly changed for the past couple of laps. It is still P1 to P7. Lopez, Doivera, Jali, Putra, Fitzpatrick, Nelson, Renfers, and Crow. These seven drivers holding on to their positions from 1 to 7 respectively. Gap between the race leader and P2 and P3 sit at an average of 8 seconds uh, respectively. So they are quite far apart. No, the uh, what's that word? Break. Rather, no, no breakaway groups at this part. It's just every driver for themselves at this point. As we look at Lopez de Oliveira taking through turns one and two of this first corner in style. Because the corner is shaped in such a way that it is easy to lose balance of your car as you enter the corners. Around the hairpin he comes. Because as he takes the exit, takes a rather wide exit. Because at that corner you want to take a wide exit in order to optimize your exit speed. As he goes full throttle over the kink at this section. And up to this hairpin. Hard on the brakes of course with the Ferrari because the torque curve is rather high. You'd want to be taking corners with a lower uh, at a lower gear. Usually during the longer races, this entire section, especially the 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 beginning of the apron of uh, after you come out of the infield section, gets completely covered by sand. Looks like a like a like a proper beach. <laughs> you could put there uh, your nice little uh, reclining seat and uh, go in for a sunbathe, but uh, of course it's night, so it wouldn't really work. Luckily, it, and that looks a bit silly, so I hope that it, it gets uh, a little bit uh, fixed for uh, next year's Daytona 24, which uh, I say next year's, but we are only a few months away. Uh, Time flies. Time absolutely flies. And uh, yesterday, I don't know if you saw the sneak. Well, it was today for you, of course. Today, the video that came out celebrating 10 years of iRacing. That's and amazing stuff. Of course, at the very end, we had a nice unexpected teaser of the day night uh, cycle and the rumors are intensifying that it might come out in time for the big event at Daytona uh, in late January as Sam Fitzpatrick takes the scenic route through the first corner there to, through the S's and cuts like half the grass and the gr groundskeeper will not be happy um, it would be a fantastic addition, of course, uh, racing in the night at Daytona. Actually, one of the one of the tracks they showed in that little preview sneak peek was Daytona. This part here, in particular, where you can see the um, the big wheel there um, in the day at night and uh, getting all lit up. So, honestly, I I absolutely cannot wait uh, to get. Uh, to get it going it's going to be a fantastic addition even though it's going to be used uh, rarely i mean not rarely but uh, you know a few times per year but it's also going to be nice to see how the dynamic weather with the new new clouds and the sky can go from sunny to darker to like proper overcast uh, in a realistic way so Maybe, like, you know, during a very quick skip barber race, it won't, won't affect much. But, you know, just in a race like this, one hour race, halfway through the race, you could get uh, the sky go overcast and completely change the track temperature and the way these guys have to approach the racing track. So, big things on the horizon for a racing. We know that in a couple of weeks, there's going to be the September build and it's going to be a bit subdued. And that is because due to the speculation running wild, the December build is going to be one for the ages. So I honestly cannot wait. 
Sounds about right because by by then I, I I'll not have enough time to race. But yes, it it is great to see how far I racing has come uh, over the years. Celebrating the tenth anniversary this year, I joined I racing back in late end of 2012 and became active uh, at the start of 2013. So that has been five five years of membership here on iRacing uh, for me so probably about halfway and I think I, I still remember back then when, when the content was still very much limited to North American content and it was only afterwards that more European content and cars here and there that started to fill up the iRacing's roster of cars and tracks of course, that added so much more flavor, especially for us uh, road racers here on iRacing. Sam Fitzpatrick still sits in P4. Uh, of course, cameras have gone to Paul Nelson, who sits in P5. So the field is still rather um, wide open at this stage. So it is each driver probably hot lapping themselves here at Daytona of course um, it is a track that um, demands skill in itself even without cars around you you still have to be on your toes uh, all race long even if it's uh, hot lapping because these corners they can bite you they can eat you up if you're not careful as Paul Nelson I'll just cross the try over the start finish line as he hauls his Porsche through uh, this increasing radius uh, first corner here because as we've said before this corner is not exactly easy to master and he now comes through this uh, hairpin and taking a wide line through the exit to get the most speed that he, he can he can carry uh, up to this uh, kink hard braking of course on the western horseshoe then down to the corner that brings you back to NASCAR 1 and 2. Tricky corner, little bit of bumps on the inside especially. But these guys are uh, being extremely careful. There's no need to push come this time of the race. With only a few minutes left, of course. It has been a rather yeah. uneventful... <laughs> race at this point as <laughs> Paul Nelson flashing his lights for a bit here towards no one in particular just to the fans maybe or to us I don't know probably maybe he's got his stream playing rolling on his side or something along his side and yeah flashing again I think he's probably bored that there's no one to play with I mean these drivers are all in hot lapping mode at this point uh, so it's all about how the drivers are able to carry the car through and not, hopefully not um, mess up their laps as they've got only a couple of minutes left to the end of this race. Because just a special shout out to the guys who make who, who made uh, this race possible. Um, of course, race organizers Kevin Huang and Bruno Cardo are so working hard week in and week out to bring you the racing action. Uh, of course, those those people, they've been all post putting up these sessions week after week. Uh, collecting race results, calculating the race results and putting them up actually in record time. It actually took Bruno just one or two days to finalize the results. And we've also got Fuji Satono who, prov who power this broadcast. Of course, a bunch of organizers and a sponsor there are making this all happen. And the race tonight, of course, um, not exactly representative of how what sim races Asia is all about. If you can, if you can look at the previous broadcast that we covered a couple of weeks ago, you you can well see that the racing action is very very much intense here, uh, by sim races Asia on Apex Racing TV. So what we're seeing here tonight is a bit, um, a little bit different, different style of racing rather. And we have to also take each race for itself. Uh, appreciating the different styles of racing that come into play in this series. Yeah, I mean, it can happen during a long season like this has been to have a weird race. I was not expecting uh, Daytona to be that weird race. Uh, 
because it's a track that everybody knows and loves and uh, it's let's be honest uh, you know couple of couple of top, tough corners but still uh, not the most difficult track in the world i judge it from my experience being a terrible driver this is a place where i can you know keep the car on the track most of the times at a decent speed but once again when you have when you have a first corner pile up like like we, not first corner first lap pile up like we had and that pile up happens to be between all the possible fast runners that could give uh, uh you know trouble to the leader except for jolly but where i can you know keep the car on the track most of the times at a decent speed but once again when you have when you have a first corner pile up like like we, not first corner first lap pile up like we had and that pile up happens to be between all the possible fast runners that uh, let's be honest uh, on pure pace today the ferrari and oliveira are faster so that's well deserved of course uh, i would have liked to see some battle between the two guys the two championship contender uh, fighting with the slipstream but the good thing we have still one more race left and it's going to be sebring that is going to be a very very hard track and like i said wednesday in the official le mans series broadcast many real life drivers say that it's much tougher for them to do 12 hours at sebring than 24 hours at daytona so it's going to be a very demanding race for these guys Absolutely, the way the corners are at Sebring, it's one of a kind actually, because um, you've got fab, it, it's a rather bumpy circuit, so that may add to the driver's fatigue as the race sets in. But the way the corners are arranged, uh, it's in such a way that you don't really know what to exactly expect. And every time you do a lap of Sebring, it's as though you're racing a new track every lap you go. Unlike every other circuit where the track is just the same over and over again. At Sebring, you have to remain conscious, you have to remain aware on your toes uh, all the time as you take those corners. Because you've got a fair mix of high-speed corners over there at Sebring, medium speed as well as hairpins, and braking zones that you have to nail, absolutely, you have to absolutely nail on point or you may miss, uh, you may ruin your entire lap. Because that is the race for next week. A lot to look forward to. Uh, we did look forward to racing here at Daytona, but unfortunately, that had not been uh, as eventful as we'd ex we would have uh, anticipated for here tonight at Daytona. So we have two Thank laps you. to go. Thank you, Scott. And so this lap and another one for Leonardo Lopez de Oliveira trying to keep his championship hope alive. We will have to wait for the post race calculations and of course the drop weeks which will come into effect going into the final race of the season when we will have a clearer picture of what's going on. But uh Championship seems to be adding towards Jaisrin, Jali, even though we will have to wait, like I said, a bit to give you the official results and we will crown officially a champion next week. So no, no need to get ahead of ourselves as Oliveira goes through the bus stop for the penultimate time. It has been a spotless drive from the Macau Sim Racing driver. Got a bit of help, but then you have to do the rest, and he did the rest. He put the gas pedal down, and he absolutely conquered everyone. As uh, we see... I think it's going to be one more lap to go. Exactly. White flag in the air. Oliveira, Jali, Putra, Fitzpatrick, Nelson, and Ramfors. So these are the six guys on the lead lap. Crow is three laps down and also he is shown in perennial red status. So I think he is parked somewhere along the track. As Fitzpatrick 
puts in a very good lap, 41.5, 42.1 for Putra, so nice gain there as Crow is in the pits. Uh, but of course, it's it's too little too late for Sam Fitzpatrick, even though a great debut. He was involved in that first corner pileup, but he was able to escape with no damage. And uh, made his way through the, the, the field nicely up until P4, then his pace difference with Putra was not big enough to allow him to close that gap but still a very very good debut for him and we hopefully will have him again for the season finale in Sebring as uh, Leonardo Lopez de Oliveira completing the bus stop for the final time and I will leave you Wayan with the final call amazing drive by Lopez de Oliveira here thank you so much uh Marco finding it over to me. Amazing performance by De Oliveira all race long tonight. Took advantage of the first lap incident and he is now coming over the start finish line for the final time. Great racing by him all race long. All season long, in fact, he's been up front fighting it hard all the way in his first win with the sound of fire of fireworks in the background. And I think this is going to be the best fireworks for Lopez de Oliveira as he's got his first win here at Sim Racers Asia Round 9. He wins here at Daytona. Jasmine Charlie down there in P2. He also comes home. He comes home in second and his teammate should also come home in P3. Oh yes, uh, here comes the other guys. Then Fitzpatrick, Nelson, Ramforce. Uh, they are a bit behind. So we will have to wait just a bit to get them uh, to the start finish line. But we are just uh, about ready to get Nelson through. Here he comes, and it's a good P5. Uh, I think another good result after uh, I think another top five back at Loma last week. As Ramforce is also completing his his final lap. Here he comes in front of pit road, and that's a good P6 uh, for the Ferrari. Lachlan Crow is in 7th and I think that everyone has crossed the start finish line so we shall have the final results on your screen in just a few seconds. Waiting for the session to switch over. As we see, of course, Oliveira taking in his cool down lap, celebrating and enjoying the fireworks. It's going to be a day race at Sebring, uh, sadly, so no fireworks to end the championship. But you cannot have every, any, everything in life, so we, we will settle for a day race uh, as the final results are on the screen uh, for you, Wayan. Fantastic stuff. Of course, race results for tonight. Lopez de Oliveira, first win of the season here at uh, Sim Racers Asia GTE Series. He wins here at Daytona Round 9. And his friend, Jasmin Jali in P2, uh, comes home in, in second. Eight seconds behind uh, Lopez de Oliveira, actually. His teammate there in P3. Uh, and Sam Fitzpatrick, that's our colleague here at Apex Racing TV. Great debut by him. He comes home in P4. Paul, ne Paul Nelson and Brian Renfers, they come up, they come home in P5 and P6, respectively. They round out the drivers in your lead lap. Lachlan Crowe finishes in P7, and he's the last of the finishers here in this session who have connected. Because the drivers who've unfortunately dropped out of this race due to internet issues or due to incidents here and there. Uh, Simon Sanchez, Alex Pope, Mo uh, Jamal Gandur, Ahmad Nurazam, Mike Burdett and Kevin Huang, they take P8 to P13, respectively. So that's the final results from Daytona, and we will wait uh, we, if we have an interview. And of course, we have an interview. How could he not come for an interview? Of course, uh, it's Sam Fitzpatrick. Uh, so a good debut in uh, P4. Sam give us your perspective on that first lap chaos seems i thought you were absolutely damaged there but in reality you just lost a lot of time but were able to keep a clean car and make a nice comeback what happened there yeah so it was a decent uh, kind of launch um and it was nearly three wide going to turn unfortunately the porsche just behind me 
um, kind of pulled out of it. Um, and then we were side by side, I think, with another Porsche through the first few corners. And then, yeah, of course, that, that, the horseshoe or whatever that, cor that corner is called. Um, yeah, I, I, I looked at it on the VPN. Yeah, contact just ahead. I went to the outside. It was really clumsy to go to the outside there. I kind of just like locked a brake because of, you know, first lap, heavy fuel, um, maybe a bit cold tire. So I went to the outside, kind of not deliberately, and uh, kind of got myself in a bit of a pickle there. But uh, I was just concentrated. Once I saw everyone stopping ahead, just slam on the brakes. Don't get any damage around here because it'll cost you so much time. That was probably a wise decision. Then later on, like, I got a slowdown, so I lost four seconds there. So I was a bit annoyed with that, but I can't regret it too much, I guess. And got away without any damage, unlike the others. So yeah, can't be, uh, can't be, uh, can't complain too much. Um, are you planning to race on Sebring next week? And uh, even if you're not, just give us a thought on a completely different track that is going to be much, much more tougher on the drivers and on the cars compared to this uh, Daytona one. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, Sebring, I think I'll, I'll do that. I'm just learning this car really for uh, DGFX coming up in uh, a couple of months' time. So I'm just learning the, the uh, Ferrari once again. And I was just really happy with the car today. Like, it, it was incredible how evenly matched us four were. We were talking on the chat, have a safety car, because it was so close between us. Like, you, you look at the gap now uh, at the end of the race compared to, like, lap five or whatever, once we got into those positions. And it's pretty much identical. We were all pushing really hard, I think. And we were all super evenly matched. So if we can get that Sebring and we don't have a turn, a lap one crash, it could be an awesome race. So, Sam, uh, that was, a, once again, a nice debut. Um, I think we should let you go because we uh, need to get that plane for Indianapolis. But before we let you go, is there anybody you'd like to thank? Yes, I am looking forward to that. Certainly tune in uh, for the uh, team stream. Uh, I think it's at like five past the hour, so certainly tune in for that. Uh, thanks to Fitzroy Motorsport um, and thanks to Demon Tweets. They're like our partners, kind of. So, uh, yeah, thanks to those guys. And also a little bit of promotion for the Radical League that we're uh, running during week 13. I think it's like the 8th of September. It's that Saturday anyway. And, uh, yeah, it's three races in the Radical at Imola. And it should be really good fun fixed setups one well. to find more information on that go to our facebook page okay thank you sam and we will catch you uh, in just a few minutes from indianapolis yep see you then so weyan i think we are uh, uh, we are uh, uh, at the end of our broadcast too bad for that crash because like sam said it was going uh, to be uh, a very close battle between the guys in front, but sadly, with no slip streaming, the lap times were so similar, nothing really happened in the front. The first few laps were very, very exciting, with especially Sam making the comeback. I'm certain that the, that the show will be 100 times better at Sebring, like we've uh, been used to uh, in the rest of the, the season this year in the ASRA GT series. Absolutely, a race that I'm not too sure if drivers want to remember or forget. Of course, a race for Lopez, for Leonardo to remember, but for some of the other drivers, it would be a race to forget. Uh, good point there. Next week's race at Sebring, the season finale. Do join us uh, same time, same day next weekend. It's going to be much, much more exciting. I think we, have, we can promise you guys on that. So, um... Not too sure if uh, there are any more interviews that may be coming. I don't, I'm not too sure if the race winner, <laughs> if he's interested in uh, joining us for an interview tonight. Okay, so uh, like I always say, if you are in the US, uh, enjoy your breakfast. If you are in the European time zone, more or less, get ready for your siesta. Not me and not Scott, because we have uh, some more work to do in just a few minutes. And then... If you are, of course, uh, from Eastern Asia, Australia, and those fantastic places there, I think it's time to get a good night sleep. So, for Marco, Mar from Marco Barbanera, for Wei Chan, Scott Newton, have a good night, and until next time.